Imagine living in a world where there was no law. Sound exciting? Sound good? What kind of a world would that be like? Initially, you might think, hey, that's great. Uh, there'd be no taxes, no speed limits, not even a Congress fighting back and forth like they are doing right now. But let's just be sober for a minute. Uh, a world without law would also mean that there would be no protection for, for the good people against the bad people. Uh, why is that? Well, because there, if there's no law, there's no one to enforce the law. So really, it's just anything goes. If your neighbor happens to be bigger than you and has a bigger stick than you do, and he wants to have what you have, he can just go take it. In fact, if he even wants to just kill you to take your property, your wife, uh, your car or whatever, he can do it because there's no law stopping him or saying that that's wrong. So suddenly, it, a world without law doesn't really look so good. Uh, and the reason is because if there's no law, there's no safety and there's no security. Do you know that everything is really built on laws? Science tells us that. We have lots of examples. We have a law of gravity. What goes up does come down. And that law keeps us on our planet so we don't go floating off into space. Mathematics have, there are laws of math. Uh, math tells us that two plus two is four. It will never equal five. This is just uh, non-negotiable. The Bible also tells us that God has a law and that his law is the basis of everything good and everything perfect in the entire universe. In the book of Exodus, right in the Bible, chapter 20, uh, we find that God has given us a perfect uh, list of his 10 commandments. And this law, this, this list, is supposed to be, is to be, the rule of our lives in everything that we do. Now, why did God do this? Is this, is this just a, an arbitrary uh, act of authority on his part or is, or is there something deeper going on? Because God's law is based on his character, it really is the essence of who God really is. The principles of the Ten Commandments, like not stealing, respecting uh, life, not murdering, not committing adultery, not taking his name in vain, not coveting, these basic principles, uh, these reveal the character of God. That's what, that's what God is like. In Matthew chapter 22, verses 37 to 40, Jesus brought out that all law can be summarized in two great principles. The first principle is that we love God supremely with all of our heart, soul, mind, and strength, and that we love our neighbor unselfishly as ourselves. Jesus also said that on these two eternal principles, all the law and the prophets, they're hanging. Now, it doesn't mean that they've, they've uh, you know, that the law has fallen down or, or is gone, but it means that the law is hanging on these two principles. That's what Jesus Christ said. So we see that the Ten Commandments can be uh, folded up under two great headings, love to God and love to our fellow man. And as we look deeper into this issue, we see that God's law, again, it's based on, on who he is. It's based on his character. Uh, God's character is a character of other-centered love. It's about living for others. That's what God does. He lives for others. He lives to bless his creation. And his creation, in turn, blesses him and, and all around us. It really blesses every single person. That's why we have sunlight in the sky. That's why rain comes down. God gives the sun. He gives the rain. He gives the atmosphere and the oxygen. And all these things that he gives then bless us. So we can then bless others. Jesus said in Matthew chapter 7, verse 12, he said, Therefore, are all things whatsoever that you would that men should do to you, do also to them. For this is the law and the prophets. So again, it's a, it's a principle of unselfish love. Everything we want people to do to us, we should do to them. Now, some might ask, did, did Jesus himself keep the law? Did he really do this? Well, just look at his life, his entire life in Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. Uh, Jesus was always ministering, giving, uh, and loving others. He was extending himself all the time to help lost, fallen man. In fact, he did this so much that he even forgot about his own needs uh, in love for others. If we want to see the law of God made up perfectly, packaged in human life, we just need to look closely at Jesus and at his life. Now, uh, did Jesus in his earthly life, as many people think, did he do away with the law of God? Well, Jesus answers that himself in Matthew chapter 5, verse, verse 17. He said, and this is in the New Testament, not in the Old Testament, Jesus said, do not think, don't even think the thought, 
that I have come to destroy the law or the prophets. I did not come to destroy, but to fulfill. How could Jesus do away with the law? Uh, that's the basis of who, of who he is. That's the basis of his character. The ninth commandment says, do not bear false witness against your neighbor. And Jesus couldn't do away with that commandment because that's part of his character. He always tells the truth. In his life, in Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, Jesus would often say, I tell you the truth, I tell you the truth, I tell you the truth. So if Jesus were to do away with the commandment that says, uh, don't bear false witness, he would, be bearing, he would be doing away with a part of himself. But he can't do that because he is the way and the truth and the life. Uh, God couldn't make a big mistake like that uh, and then just say, oops, um, my Ten Commandments that I took my own finger and wrote on tables of stone, oops, I, I made a mistake. The law was faulty and I have to get rid of it or at least a part of it. Uh, that, that just doesn't make sense. When God took his finger and wrote the Ten Commandments on stone, that tells us that that law is, uh, is eternal on a rock and it can never change. There were, however, other laws and ceremonies uh, that were in the Old Testament that pointed forward to and were fulfilled at the death of Jesus Christ. Uh, we see lots of laws. The Jews sometimes ter term these the law, and the Bible also does uh, refer to them as, as law and puts all law together in numerous times, numerous times. And yet when you really look closely at Scripture, you will discover that the uh, ceremonial laws and the laws of sacrifices that pointed forward to Jesus Christ and his coming, those laws were definitely distinct and different from the Ten Commandments. Uh, those laws were, were transitory. Uh, they, were, they were temporary, whereas God's holy law of Ten Commandments written on stone with his own finger, uh, that law can, can never, ever, ever be changed. It continues to exist right now to this day. Uh, Jesus said it, it, it would be easier to get rid of the heavens and the earth than it would be to get rid of that law. That law continues in all of its luster. Now some might ask, uh, can we today as fallen human beings, is it possible for us to really keep the law? Or, or you know, what about for salvation? Can we keep the law or do we need to keep the law for salvation? Well, let's answer that question. Why did Jesus die in the first place? Why did he suffer in Gethsemane? Why did he die on the cross? Well, the reason is because of sin. We know that, we all know that. And the Bible tells us, 1 Corinthians 15, 3, that Jesus died for our sins. And in 1 John chapter 3, verse 4, it tells us that sin is breaking the law. And so ultimately, Jesus Christ died because humanity has broken the law of God. Uh, and that shows by its very nature that it, uh, the law can't be done away with. In fact, the cross reveals the immutability of the Ten Commandments. Do we want to be like Jesus if we really uh, love him, if we believe in him as our Savior and accept him as our Savior and trust not in ourselves, not in our works, not in our commandment keeping, but trust in him and his grace and his merits and what he did for us on the cross? Uh, if we really appreciate that and if we want to be like him and if his law of love, if, as, if his character is attracti attractive to us, which we see mirrored in the Ten Commandments, uh, then we, we really do want to be like him. And learning to become more like Jesus is actually learning to become more of a commandment keeper. Scripture promises a change of heart for all who seek to be like God, all who surrender their lives to him, all who trust in the power and the merits and the forgiveness and the grace of the cross. Uh, then we will find a power within us and a motivation within us that we didn't have before that will lead us to actually, uh, by the grace of God, to become a commandment keeper. Uh, even if we don't realize it many times, we will just naturally start doing the things that the law requires because that is based on the principle of love and we, by his grace, are becoming more loving. Uh, in a marriage, people need to be faithful to each other. They don't do it out of obligation, but they do it out of love. Uh, if you really love your spouse or your children, you are inspired to be faithful, to be a good husband or a good, uh, a good wife, because you want to be. Remember, it was the devil who in heaven tried to do away with the law of God. Uh, the Bible tells us this in, in different places, and the only way that um, his rebellion can continue 
uh, is if he puts that character inside of people. And that's what he's doing. He's putting his own rebellious will, his own rebellious character inside of humanity and tempting them to do the same thing that he did today. He's trying to make us commandment breakers and have it as part of our characters. Uh, will God have a people on this earth at the very end of time who actually become commandment keepers? Well, the book of Revelation says that that will happen. Revelation 12 verse 17 says that the devil is making war on those who keep the commandments of God and have the testimony of Jesus Christ. We see the same thing in Revelation 14, 12. Here is the patience of the saints. Here are they that keep the commandments of God and the faith of Jesus. And uh, according to Romans chapter 13, verse 10, the Bible is clear that love is the fulfilling of the law, not the breaking of the law, but it is fulfilling, keeping the law. The, mo the most beautiful part about God's law is that it's about relationships, uh, God and man together, man cooperating with God to do the will of God and to have his law in our hearts. At the heart of the Ten Commandments is the Sabbath commandment. It points back to God, to the creator of heaven and earth. We see that in Exodus chapter 20. When you look at the Ten Commandments, you see verses 8 to 11, that uh, in six days the Lord made heaven and earth. The Bible says that on the seventh day God rested and he was refreshed. We read that in Genesis chapter 2, verses 1 to 3. What was it that was refreshing to the Lord after uh, making the world and then resting on the Sabbath? What was refreshing was the loving relationship that he was looking forward to with, with man, with you, with me, with all of us. Uh, human beings are the crowning act, the crowning joy of his creation. Time spent with those that we love is really special. It is uh, refreshing, it is wonderful, it is priceless. And how much more when God set apart a 24-hour period at the end of each week for us to spend time with him. So then in the end, it's not really an issue of just do's and don'ts. It's about loving the one who loved us so much and who made this world for us, who made us, and ultimately who gave his life on, on the cross to pay for our sins of straying away from him. This is what really it's all about. In the end, when it gets down to the final analysis, the big issue at the end of the world about commandment keeping or commandment breaking is, a, is an issue of love. But it's not, a, it's not a Hollywood marshmallow kind of love. It's a love that is willing to stand up for God and by his grace to be among those that the devil's making war on. Revelation 12, 17, it says those who keep the commandments of God and who have the testimony of Jesus Christ.